What's better than a beer with Atlas? An Atlas beer with Atlas. Oh my gosh. Full beers <laughs> with Atlas. <laughs> Kapow. Kapow. This is great. I can't wait. What's that one sound effect? <laughs> that one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, we need to just drop that in. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. And I'm Brian. On the little black box tricorder looking thing like usual, Mr. Dolan. Let's do this. All right. Oh boy, he's ready. He's ready. Yeah. And why shouldn't he? Because the beer we're drinking today is actually called Atlas. Welcome to A Beer with Atlas, where we drink beers with Atlas. This episode has featured the beer, Atlas, drank by... The people from Atlas, a beer <laughs> with Atlas, inside of Atlas, inside of Atlas. All right, is this like Inception? Kind of, it is. We're down in the wormhole. It is kind of. Okay, so thank you to uh, Mark Lau's. Uh, Mark Lau's a recruiter here. He's a very tall fellow. Very tall, lanky yeah. fellow. Yep. His traveler, uh, mm-hmm. Devin Beatty, sent us these beers. Nice. Yeah. From Tulsa. Oh, boy. Hmm. That well, is an ice cold beer, by the way, fellas. No that is cold. Kidding. I can't I'm still going to pour it in the glass. Yeah, though. me too. I'm not a monster. Don't just, just he dive just, in. She's chugging. Okay, here's, here's the thing oh. this is a West Coast IPA. Well, here's what it says right on the box. Atlas is a traditional East Coast IPA. I'm, I'm sorry, East. Okay. But, what? What? Yeah. Does that melt your brain? Yes. Look at it. I mean, East Coast doesn't mean hazy. In my world, it does, oh. right? New England is a hazy IPA, <sighs> not East Coast Well, that's IPA. East Coast. Well, yeah, but that's a subset. That's okay. A, yeah. The, let me just read what it says here. Okay, okay. Atlas is a traditional East Coast India pale ale with strength and character worthy of its name. Pale and caramel. Malts. I think it's caramel, but I like caramel. Please continue. Give Atlas IPA a rich, malty backbone to provide balance for a generous dose of Amarillo, CTZ, and Cascade hops. Harmoniously blended throughout the boil, these hop varieties provide floral, citrus, and earthy tones, resulting in a bold yet balanced IPA. So the color reminds me of Sam Adams Boston Lager. Yeah. Right, has it's that very malty reminiscent of that, yeah, that or the, almost a barley wine color, almost, yeah. The smell, smell it. Mm-hmm. But this is what IPAs used to be. This, yeah, this color, yeah. And flavor, have you tasted it? Try it. No, I haven't give, tried give it. Give it a shot here because I'm going to be interested in in what you think. Because hmm. if this is what IPAs used to be, then hmm. we have deviated from from the norm dramatically. Yeah. Really? Mm. Yeah, it's not bad at all yeah i thought i was gonna hate it i've been trying to trying this to tell does, you that this just doesn't have that okay wow in fact i i wanted to almost hate it but i like you it you couldn't i can't nice I, not your style see even, not my style at all no. even with the ibus being what they were because it's high right i need to look it up i didn't write this down, okay so. we'll have to check it out yeah i mean it's it's probably let me see if it's on the bottle anywhere six and a half percent I don't see any IBUs listed. I almost got it here. Hang on. We'll have to see. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's more about the malt. It's very malty. Mm-hmm. Sixty nine IBUs. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't taste like that to me. No, no, not at all. Because you'd think, I don't know. Usually over fifty or sixty, you start to feel that bitterness mm-hmm. creeping mm-hmm. in, and mm-hmm. I don't get that in this at all. A Boston Lager is more bitter than this. Way more bitter. It's very drinkable. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let's, yeah, let's it's got that Boston malty lager. flavor that 
I like this is what you know when I started drinking craft beer and IPAs. This is pretty close to what this we is. Were doing. This is why you can't trust the IBU scales because exactly. Boston Lager is listed as thirty IBUs, mm-hmm. and that is more bitter than this. Yeah, this just that just shows what these guys know what they're doing. Hmm. Mm, that is good. good. Surprise, super surprise, and I'll tell you, these guys. I, I have every time I do my research, I, I you know I fall in love with the with yep. the brewery just a little, you know each one of them a little bit. My my bromance starts, and, yes. and you know then I follow them on Facebook, and so Marshall Brewing Company is located at seventeen forty two East Sixth Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, you know ours are ours are TBD right now, right? Just because of yeah. how the world is, but uh, uh, normally in a, in a normal world. Hours Monday through Thursday, two to nine. Friday noon to ten. Sunday one to seven. Uh, Eric Marshall is his name. Started it in two thousand and eight. Uh, was a uh, was a home brewer. Duh. I mean, that's, yeah. Every story seems to start like that. And uh, thought, you know, this is this is what he wants to do. This is his, this is his career path. And so he goes to Germany. Must not have been married, I guess, at the time. Or mm. if now, I don't even know. Uh, goes to Germany and uh, apprentices at six different small German breweries. Breweries, learn the skills, learn the trade. Which you know what, knowing that now and then tasting this makes a ton of sense. Yeah, it's got that yeah that kind of flavor profile. Uh, I I read a little bit about them too, and I one of the things I liked was that he had double major mm-hmm. double degree and one of them is in german language in german so language. he could like learn he could talk it right? right and then he went there and like got a degree from the, one of the brewing schools so yep. he wasn't messing around no no not at all and then uh came back worked at victory brewing just outside of philadelphia which we've had some yeah i think we've had one or two of their beers. i think so too and then uh, you kind of learned from the bottom up, right? Worked in the cellar, was worked in, you know, on the keg line, yep. that type of thing. And you can really tell, like, that comes through in the dude as he's just sitting there on the video on their website just talking. And he's wearing a pair, like a, a Carhartt mm-hmm. uh, overalls with their logo, with Marshall Brewing Company, nice. logo, which is super cool. But just regular dude, right? Wants to make beer. Wants to make really, really good beer. I like how his brother's involved, too. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. He's like the attorney, so like, like attorney by day and like nerd at night or something. Yeah, He's like very well known nerd guy. I wrote him. down some fun quotes from him. He okay. seemed to be very quotable oh, for nice. some reason. All um, right, and if you go go watch their video there on their website, which they uh, had a production company yeah. do a video for him. Super awesome. Job. Was that their ten year anniversary video or whatever? It the was? one right above that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he, this is one of his quotes: "The craft brewing industry is ninety nine percent asshole free." Like ever, they're all friends, right? That's like, pretty, probably pretty accurate. I think so too. Because if you run cross somebody like that, you're not going to go back. You right. Know? I don't. I don't spend my time with those folks mm-hmm. anyway. And it's that has shocked me since my you know very small involvement here in, yeah. in the craft brew scene here in Omaha that I've noticed that that they're all friends, no matter who's come from where or done what mm-hmm. or whatever. Like they all help each other for the most part. Well, it's. You know, that's what the collaboration spirit is. You know, we're talking about breweries working with other breweries, making beers they haven't made before. And mm-hmm. as far as I've, I mean, not that I'm in the game, so to speak, but I've been around the scene of in oh. Omaha for a while. Oh, you've been around. Yeah, and I've, yeah, I've been around <laughs> and I've never heard one brewery be like, oh, man, we are so much better than X. Right. You know, like you just don't hear that maybe yep. behind closed doors, but never public facing. Right. Which is kind of nice. Which that's is- not always the case. Uh, right in business, you know, just business in general. Like, yeah, it seems like craft brewers are so different when it comes to that. Yeah, it's not so like bloodthirsty and cutthroat, right? You know, which yeah. is which is fun. I love that. Uh, another one of his quotes was, "There's a lot of love in our beer, but no ego." Mm, I like it. That's nice too. Yeah, that's cool too. Right? Huh. And they, they just want to be the best. They just want to. They just want to brew good beer. I mean, that's that's their goal. Some wisdom from the plains. I like that. This yeah. guy's great. Yeah. He just seems like a down to earth dude, like a dude that you can yep. just, you can just drink a beer with and have a normal conversation. That's that really is, seems to be the case with brewers and people that either work at or yep. run craft breweries. Like, yeah, there are people you want to hang out with. I thought this was a fun little side bit too on their website was uh, sustainability. Like they have a whole section on their website about sustainability. Mm, okay, and uh, and I know there are brewers here in Omaha that do this. 
one in particular that I'm close to, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but they take all of their spent grain and they give it to ranchers. Yeah. To use to feed cattle and. I know Lucky Bucket does that too. Mm-hmm. So that that's the first place I heard of that did that sort of stuff. That seems to be a pretty common thing. Like, what are they going to do with it? Like, I think they used it like a trading co-op. They traded Lucky Bucket, I think, for a while, traded their old spent grain and got pumpkins oh. in return from the farmer. Smart. So they would make their pumpkin beer with, with those pumpkins. That is super smart. I mean, it works both ways and helps people out. So huh. kind of cool. 6,000 pounds per week is what they're giving to just one rancher. Just one dude out nice. there. Nice. That's pretty cool. That's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. Holy cow. Those cows That's how much are... beer. They had a lot of different kinds of beer. Yes, they did. It looked like a place I would like to go and like try a bunch of their styles because mm-hmm. they were fairly traditional. Yes. It wasn't like mm-hmm. I didn't see a whole lot of like beet juice IPAs nope. and you know milkshakes or anything yeah. like that. It was like, here's our wheat beer. Cherry limeade. Yeah, there weirdness. wasn't anything like no, that. Uh-uh. It was very true, tra- which makes ties into his probably his German schooling you know, mm-hmm. of the styles. But sometimes you want that, though, right? Sometimes I mean, you do, but also it's fun to get there, something different in the new cutting thing, but it's also fun to go back and see where it's come from. Right. This is a very traditional craft brewery, I would say, as far as what it kind of used to be, even though it's only 10 years old. it's They have the styles of beers that were around 25 years ago. I got to tell you, this is, as we've been talking here, I'm about halfway through this, mm-hmm. and I did not think I would like, I thought the best part would be the name Atlas in the, yeah. in the label. Yeah. Not my style at all. I love it. Well, good thing you have three more. You can sneak those home with your quarantine. Those are going home with me in, in my quarantine. Well, I did a little bit of... Uh, I'm all over the board on research today. Um, I think we had another brewery. Was it, I think, the Hanson one? Mm-hmm. Was Tulsa area? Was Tulsa right? area, uh-huh. So I didn't get into a lot of this, but I did this time. So I just want to throw some Tulsa facts out to us. Okay. And the first three, I, I always like to hear those things that are like, did you know it's illegal to do this in, in this place? Those weird old laws that are Ooh, on the books. Love so I have those. Three of them from, from Tulsa. Uh, Dolan would be in trouble in Tulsa because it is illegal to get a tattoo since 1963. Man. What? Yeah, I can't get them. But they do have tattoo artists there. Okay. And it's not really enforced. But they do usually have their business, what I read online, as they say that they are a tattoo removal service. Oh. But then they just put them on instead of taking them off. Oh. So that's like their little loophole around it. But yeah. Weird. It's, since 1963, it's been illegal to get a tattoo. 1963? Yeah, that's when the law went in place. <laughs> You'd think it would have been like 1863. No. Yeah. Uh, it is illegal to bring an elephant to downtown Tulsa. Well. Which makes sense. Okay. You know. Uh, and then it's also well, this one's great. Whoa, 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 whoa! What happened when like when I, like the circus came to town? Right. Well, uh, no, you're not just walking them down the street. You're just hanging out in the fairgrounds. Yeah, or something? under the big top tent. Yeah, okay. It's also illegal to open a soda without a licensed engineer, like, like a bottle pop, like a yeah, like a, a bottle cap. You can't open one at, without a licensed engineer. That's against the law. Super weird. They don't really enforce that one. <laughs> so I'm guessing maybe the mayor's kid at one point opened a bottle and the bottle cap popped him in the eye or something and he got all mad and said, that's it. We're not doing this. Well, it's very difficult. Yeah. Right. I mean, or maybe it's like, it was like soda fountains or something and they're trying to, oh. I don't know. I have no idea why that would be a thing, but it is. So, so there you go, Tulsa. Interesting. Uh, here's some other things about Tulsa. Garth Brooks was born there. Oh. Cool. Friends in Low Places. That's right. Uh, the Outsiders movie. Ever seen it? Uh, the movie, yes. yes. If you're currently watching the HBO series, I would suggest you don't because it's dumb. Oh, I watched it. I liked it a lot. What? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a Stephen King guy, though. Man, we disagree on a lot of things. Yeah, we do. Uh, but the Outsiders film from 1983 was shot in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I think that's the one that has like uh, Patrick Swayze's mm-hmm. in it and Ralph Macchio and some other famous folks. I want to say uh, Dylan, one of the yeah, Dylans. Yeah, Matt Dylan. Matt Dylan, yep. Uh, there is a famous ghost in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ooh. It haunts the McFarland Library on the University of Tulsa. So um, not unlike a lot of places that have ghosts in the stacks down below. Oh. Um, this one, they named him Farley. Oh, okay. And uh, basically what he likes to do is if you get up from your desk and leave, uh, your papers will be missing or turned around or on the floor or whatever, and books fall off the shelves. And 
Uh, some cleaning lady said one time she was in this room, like the multimedia room, and went in there, and there was a guy in a graduation gown standing in there, like in the middle of the night, just standing there in the dark, and she turned the light on, saw it, freaked out, ran out, and he was gone. Huh. So um, he's a mischievous poltergeist. Kind of, yeah. He just kind of hangs out there in the library. Okay. Like Slimer. Very much like Slimer, except okay. not green. Um, they have a thing called the Lindy Oktoberfest. And it is one of the best in the world. So in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they have a huge Oktoberfest, like we've done episodes about. Right. They have a very traditional German-style stuff there. Yeah. I guess a lot of German immigrants started there working in the oil Mm -hmm. industry. Um, But they also have one of the best German food... I don't know what the term would be, like a food fest, I guess. Okay. So they like celebrate German food. Brats and yeah. kraut and... Like all that sort of thing. Man. And uh, like Bon Appetit magazine said it's one of the best German food festivals in the United States. Let's go. In the middle of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. The yield sign was invented in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Interesting. 1950, retired policeman Clinton Riggs was like, you know what? Stop and start. That's great, but we need a little bit something else. How about a yield? Yield. Made the sign. Started it working there, and it's made its way across the United States. Let's see. What else did I write down? I don't want to stereotype, but maybe, like, whoa, could have been, like, one of his choices, and he went with yield he instead. Went yield. He, he well, went more Old English. Well, you know, it just sounds a little more sophisticated. Eh, okay, you're right. Uh, what was the last? Oh, in the late 50s, there was a company there. I forgot to write down what it was, but they created the first fish finder like sonar detectors. Oh, yeah. And the the company is still in business today making those, and also they make GPS. So that's one of the employers in town. Interesting. And then in 1989, cult classic film. You and I, I guarantee, mm-hmm. have seen it. Okay. And probably love it, and, and at least in my group of friends, we quote it all the time. Dolan will have no idea. Um, this movie was called UHF. Oh, supplies. <laughs> Yeah, you get to drink from the fire hose. Oh, man. 1989, the whole thing shot in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you're not driving right now, you should push pause mm-hmm. and just go watch You Get to Drink from the Fire Hose. Yeah. You found the marble and the oatmeal. Uh, <laughs> you get a drink from the fire hose. Dolan's like, what the heck? I'm going to send the clip to him later. Yeah. It's <laughs> hilarious. You know, it took me years, so I watched it in the theaters. You did? I did. Okay. Yeah. Well, my dad ran a theater. So yeah, that, I guess that's true. Right. Uh it took until it came out on VHS for me to get the supplies mm-hmm. joke. Didn't get it. <laughs> Did not get it. Yeah. I laughed so hard that night. There were some beers involved, obviously. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, that happens. Oh, God. I laughed so hard. Yeah. I remember, surprisingly, watching that movie once. I think my grandma came up from the farm to Lincoln. This would have been probably when it first came out on VHS. Because mm-hmm. we watched it at home. And I remember watching it. With my farmer wife, grandma, <laughs> and she's just like, "What is this? This is ridiculous." And it has like that Rambo parody, yeah, like all that stuff. <laughs> so basically, where they stole Hot Shots idea, part do, but yeah, good stuff. That was shot in Tulsa. That somehow I'm not surprised. I mean, it's small town, right? UHF yeah. Channel, small town. Yeah, yeah. That's a Weird Al movie for you. Mm-hmm. I never dropped the nugget there. Oh, huh. Weird Al had a movie mm-hmm. that he like wrote and starred in, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't very popular in the theaters, but boy, is it stuck around. People our age, it's, yeah. Michael I, Richards was in it, the guy I, from Kramer from Seinfeld, mm-hmm. a couple mm. other couple yeah. other folks, but. He, uh, so I have it on Blu-ray if you want to borrow it. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, wow. Because it's, the Blu-ray, ver- it's obviously, it needs yeah. to be on Blu-ray. It's, of course. It's kind of stupid, but yeah. yeah. Why not? It was like five bucks at Walmart. I couldn't pass it up. Why? Yeah, why would you? Right. Do uh, you got any other information for us? So, Otherwise, I do. I thought it'd be interesting to kind of hit why. So uh, when this, when we saw this for the first time on, where did this come? Okay, so John on on the brand team mm-hmm. was doing some research, and Marshall Brewing Company came up as as he was doing beer research for a beer with Atlas for mm-hmm. our for our podcast, and the Atlas beer came up from Marshall Brewing Company, and so I thought it'd be interesting just to maybe touch on. Uh, us atlas where like where we came from oh, a little okay. bit like just just a, a brief you know you know kind of well why don't you do that because guess what i have what do you got i have research on atlas on the actual atlas. yes Ooh, i was hoping guy. i was gonna bring it up but i didn't want to yeah. disappoint anyone if I you said it. no <laughs> oh. yeah because I, I was like okay it's obviously if you've ever seen a picture of where we're recording this uh this person is 
is everywhere. Pictured everywhere mm-hmm. almost. And I was like, okay, what does that come from? So I have that. Why don't you give us the business side? So the business side really was uh, in, in high school, I read the book Atlas Shrugged. And, yep. and, uh, and that it made an, an impression on me. And so it kind of just stuck with me through through the years. And then unbeknownst to me, at the same time, because Steve and I are the same age, Steve Ryan and I are the same age, when he was in high school growing up, and he was born in Ohio, grew up in New York, then kind of moved around with his family for a while, uh, he read the same book, same impression on him. And so then when it came time, we would go to, we both worked at a different agency for a while, and we would go to lunch, and, and we would go eat Chinese food at this little Chinese place that's not there anymore, which was really good. They had the best peanut butter chicken in town. Mm. It was so good. Uh, and we would talk about, you know, if we if we had our own agency, we would do it this way. Like, we were super smart. And, oh, yeah, of course. Oh, of course, right? <laughs> There's so much we didn't know. I mean, it was ridiculous. Anyway, I mean, we were big talkers and never thought it would actually happen. Push comes to shove. I get fired from that agency, which is one of the best things that ever happened in my life. Uh, have the opportunity to start Atlas. And then I work on Steve for about a year now. About a year and a half, probably about 18 months. Like, hey, you need to come do this with me. If we're going to be successful, like, I need you here. Like, you need to be the guy. Yeah. I'm not the guy. I know that about myself. Hmm. Like, I'm just not the dude. That takes involved thinking. Well, to You know what I mean? I, to understand and, and admit that. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm perfectly happy and very, very comfortable being the Commander Riker to his Jean-Luc Picard, right? For all the Star Trek fans. Does anybody get that? I get, I kind of get it. I've never seen it, but I know who you're talking about. Here, here's the thing, and everyone knows every time Riker got command of the Enterprise, something bad happened. Ooh, bad. don't let him. Okay, right. So no, but as as first officer, yeah, he's pretty fantastic. Sure, he makes great decisions. So in that same vein, I understood like we got to do this together, and and we've we've been friends for 16 years now, and I understood there are things that he's strong at that I'm not, and I'm strong at things that he's mm-hmm. not. And so it kind of it kind of played in that story, you know, a, a little bit, and, and kind of the way the world was going, and, and how we saw things, and so that uh, that kind of that that was what brought him over here. And we really floundered for that first eighteen months. It just it just didn't work. It just wasn't working. Even in a very good market, it wasn't working until Steve got here, and and we could do this together. So where was the first office at? The first office was right up at the top of hundred uh, twentieth and Miracle Hills Drive. Okay. So not far from Warren Buffett's house, actually, just, Ooh, just nice. down the street there. So, hmm. yeah, trying to get a little of that osmosis, huh? Yeah, good part of town, right? You know, if it's good for Warren, it's good for us. I, yeah, I feel like that's true. Right. So, in, in fun little office, like three thousand square feet, not very big, eight cubes. Started very, very, very small, um, and then I mean, grown to now where we are here in in twenty twenty, and you know, a twenty thousand foot square foot office with you know one hundred and however many, 35 cubes or whatever, and, and 50 people working remotely in that yeah. time. You know, 50-ish working people working remotely. So Or 150, 200. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's come a long way. So, yeah, yeah it's just, it, was, it may be interesting for someone that's listening to the podcast that never was really watching any of the videos or whatever to understand who we are, where we came from. You know, like, I still, I still sit at, the reception desk. The first person you see when you come in is either me at the reception desk mm-hmm. or straight ahead is where Steve sits. I, I yeah. mean, that's and that's important to us. Like we're not in offices stuck in the back and yeah. You know, if an email goes out to all of the travelers that work for us, all of the traveling nurses, therapists, and techs that work for us, it comes from us. It doesn't come from a no reply right type of email address or whatever. Like it's still it's still real and personal for us. So that's awesome. And I don't think it's ever going to change like that. So it's, it's just going to continue. I think, well, I don't think the people will let you no let it change. No, which not is at good. All. So that's, that's a, a brief history of, of, of Atlas med staff there. I like it. Cause I, when I got hired to come here, I didn't get to go through the, uh, training, the indoctrination training of like, here's what we are as a company and yep. all that stuff. So I didn't know any of that. So thank you. Here's what I didn't know also. Okay. I've seen this guy obviously coming here and even before here. Like this is an image that you have seen before. It's a bearded dude holding up the earth for mm-hmm. the most part or something nice and round. Uh, and his name is Atlas. And I wanted to get some information, some knowledge because I've heard it before. But I didn't, I don't, you know, I took this class maybe 
my freshman year of college, like okay. Greek history mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff, mytholo- mythologies Mythology, and yeah. whatnot. So we're going to do a little refresher. Uh, he was a Titan. Atlas the Titan yes. is his name. Mm-hmm. And he is responsible for bearing the weight of the heavens on his shoulders. As a punishment from Zeus. Mm-hmm. Because he led an army of to other titans against the Greek gods for a battle of the heavens. And they lost. Mm. Greek gods won. Well, the, the titans the lost. Gods versus titans. Right. right. Okay. So because he was the leader of that, they said, okay, well, you got to hold this. Mm-hmm. You got to do this thing now. Um, Plato, some philosopher guy, I guess, not the Play-Doh that you're used to, um, he said that this person was the king of Atlantis, the first king. Before Poseidon? Yes. No. This is what I, Plato says. Am I confusing my, my Greek gods versus Roman gods? I have I mean, no idea. Poseidon versus... Okay. I feel like he's... I feel like he's... Before this went into the ocean, mm. he was the king. Oh, um, and also he is the name, that's why we have the Atlantic Ocean, it comes from Atlas. I did not know that. And let's see what else do I have. He is, his parents, oh boy, Uh-oh. his dad was Apetus, I-A-P-E-T-U-S, and okay. his mom was Themis, which means nothing to me, mm. but he was the older brothers of Epithemus, Minotius, and this guy, Prometheus, oh. who stole fire, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Uh, and then he was also a parent. Atlas was the dad of a nymph named Calypso. A nymph. Yeah. Calypso. That's for a different podcast, I suppose. Mm. But um, yep. let's see. What else would, did he, that I find out about him? Oh, he's tied usually with Hercules. Mm-hmm. Do you know this information? I didn't know this. I know he was connected to Hercules. I just don't know how. So there's a couple of different stories. Um, basically... Oh, my goodness. Right? The hockey player. What's he doing here? Yeah, who knows? He looks like he's in the penalty box anyway. Right. (laughs) Oh, boy. He's had too many to drink today. Yes, he has. Um, Look at him still. I know. Oh, he still loves us, though. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hercules. Basically, what happens is Hercules has this quest, and he has to go get these golden apples from Queen Hera. Oh. And her place is surrounded by guards. And uh, Hercules says, oh, boy, I don't have a chance, but there's somebody that's bigger and stronger even than me uh, that could probably do it, and it's a dude named Atlas. Um, so what they did was Atlas, for just a short time, hands over the earth, hands over the heavens, and Hercules holds it. Oh. And Atlas goes and gets the golden apples and is supposed to bring them back, and he does. But then he's like, not holding that earth is pretty great. Yeah. I don't really want to take it back. You go ahead and, and hold on to that, Hercules. Awesome. But then Hercules is so smart and he's so cunning that he tricks Atlas. And he's like, well, how about you hold it again for just a second? If I have to do this forever, I want to go get some cushions, some pillows. Oh. So put on my shoulder so it doesn't hurt so much. So you go ahead and hold it for a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> and I'll and also go get a pack of cigarettes. Uh-huh. And then, you know, he never came back. <laughs> so then Atlas was tricked, and then he's back with the heavens and, uh. and the weight of the solar system on his shoulders. So you're telling me Atlas wasn't very smart. But then. they also say he was. Just Hercules was even mm. smarter oh. and more cunning. Um, in Homer's... The Odyssey, mm-hmm. which I don't know if you ever read in high I school, did. but uh-huh. I did, from, mm-hmm. and in college I read. Mm-hmm. Um, he's credited, Atlas is credited with basically being in charge of pillars as, you know, concrete mm-hmm. structures. And the reason that the earth and the heavens don't crash into the ocean is because Atlas has these pillars way out there, and oh. it's holding them separate. And if it's not for Atlas, then everything will just smush, smash, like a, like a sandwich. Interesting. So that's going on with him. Um, he's also known for the Atlas Mountains in northern Africa. There's an Atlas Range. Oh, okay. And I did not know about that. But in this story, um, he was a shepherd. Atlas was a person. And hmm. somebody came in to his area, a mm-hmm. guy named Perseus, who was famous. Oh, from uh, Perseus, the same Perseus, yes. maybe from uh, Clash of the Titans? Yes, from oh, that. Oh, interesting. So he meets this shepherd named Atlas, and the shepherd isn't very hospitable to him, doesn't sure. offer him anything. Mm-hmm. And that makes Perseus mad. So he reaches in his bag, 
pulls out Medusa's head. Yep. Pow! Now he's a rock. Turns to stone. Turns to stone. Turns into a mountain range. The Atlas Mountains. Oh. Which is kind of cool. That's super cool. And then the, I think the very last thing about him basically was he was just known as being real wise um, and for the most part, they call him like the father of astronomy. Mm-hmm. Allegedly, he's the father of a bunch of stars. And uh, hmm. they were like, when you look to the heavens, mm-hmm. that's that's Atlas's work. That's his doing. Good job. And because of that, then he also has to hold the weight of that oh. as his punishment. Well, you made him, so. Yeah, so you get to do that. Yeah. But that's in a brief little synopsis about him and why he's holding the earth. Um, that's what's up. Interesting. I, I mean, I knew some of that already, but the whole Perseus story is super interesting. Yeah. And then I think there's just different versions of him and, and stories like from time, cause we're talking, you know, since things were first written down mm-hmm. stories about this guy. And then even into like, from what I could tell the second century, there was more stories about him too. Hmm. Um, so people just took his name and, and, adapted it and made different things happen wrote tales right. about yeah. him and yeah. yeah and his adventures which is interesting because really it's like kind of the birth of religion yeah. when you think about it right yeah. and it's no real different than what the big christianity boom was you know hundreds of years later right uh but this one to me is at least a little bit more exciting with battles and wars and yeah turn into stone and drag like he had to get past a hundred headed dragon to get those apples so oh. that's pretty cool good job yeah. I, he, well, you know, I mean, the, the Old Testament has some fun stuff like that too. I mean, not nearly as yeah, not nearly as you know the stories like this with yeah. the Greek gods. But at least the, that's the exciting you know, part. True, I yeah. feel like. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Dolan, that's, how you doing over there? I'm almost done. Holy cow! I got to hurry done. up. Look at that. See, he's in the same boat that I'm in. That it just it wasn't what I expected. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It's so good, though. It is good. I would like this in a big stein, like uh-huh. a big pour. Uh-huh. It's just, uh, I, I think it's a lot more like malty than it is. Um, hoppy? Hoppy, yeah. 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 Which I can do. I, I, can, do, I yeah. really appreciate the maltiness out of this. Yeah, me uh-huh. too. I'm going to pour a little more in my glass here before I go in for my third and final area of knowledge. I'm going gonna, oh. gonna to back out here because I want to see, what's the ABV on this? Did we see on this? I think it says 6.5. Okay. Yeah, six point five. All right, so traditional, pretty standard IPA. Yeah, yeah, interesting. So hmm. when I was before I did the Atlas stuff, um, I was thinking I want to go a direction that's not expected. Right, that's y- what I like to do. Your left turns are the best turns, but I also like music. And I was like, okay, yeah. what can I do? How am I going to figure this out? Yep. Here's how I figured it out. Okay, one of my favorite R and B soul songs of all time is called At Last. By Etta James. Etta James. So if you kind of say it a little different or you think in cursive, you get at last. Pretty close. Right? So mm-hmm. we're going to do that. Do you know the song? I do. Do you know the song, Dolan? I don't. Okay. Well, I, we'll I would, probably drop it in. I would really try to here. sing it, but... We'll just drop it in right here. Drop it in right here. Just that little, that first part, the when she sings it, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just classic. So it starts out as a song... By Glenn Miller and his orchestra, 1942. We're talking World War II. Oh, yeah. So he has the hit, kind of a hit, Mm -hmm. and it was in a movie. Glenn Miller, for people that uh, don't know, Mm -hmm. was like Elvis before Elvis. Like He was the pop star of the United States, and he's the conductor and trombone player of his own big band. Big band guy. He's in a bunch of movies. Mm -hmm. He has the biggest selling records. He's like pre-Frank Sinatra. He's... He, Frank Sinatra did stuff with him. Like, yeah. People went to Glenn Miller to be the vocalist, basically mm-hmm. to sing a song. But he was like the popular musician of, of the time, late 30s and 40s. Mm-hmm. So he has a movie, and they put this song in the movie with vocals, and it's all shot and done. And I think the director was like, you know, we have so many big songs in this movie. Why don't we save that one for the next movie we're going to do? So they delete the vocals, but they leave the instrumentation in the movie. Okay. So then they release that version, then they release a version with the vocals, and they chart pretty well, like in the 20s, like number 21 or whatever, Sure, if it would have been on like a billboard chart now. Um, and then we fast forward like oh, 18, almost 20 years, and we get to 1960. And there's an arrangement done by Riley Hampton, and he basically makes the song we know today. 
So he figures out a way to take the big band, puts it a lot smaller version, and then Etta James sings on it. Mm -hmm. And it's a hit. Kind of a hit. Was Etta James big before this song? This was her debut album. Oh. And the album was called At Last. So it's her first album. Mm -hmm. It was the third single off the album. Came out in 1960. Um, It's probably her most famous song next to... Yeah, I'd say it's her most famous song. I was going to say Sunday Kind of Love, which is a kind of a popular song. It was in NFL commercials a few years ago. Yeah. Um, but this one's probably her like token song. Like this is what she's known for. If you were, if this were a Jeopardy question, yeah, and you just says Etta James, then yeah. I what would song say, that she's saying you say at yeah, last. last, right? So Wait, I think I've heard this song probably, mm-hmm. and here's why: it's popular. It wasn't a huge hit, but it was like in the teens ish. Um, but it's still something that is played today, like on oldies yep. channels and R&B channels and that sort of stuff. Um, Beyonce has a version. It was in a movie in 2008. Mm, maybe that's the version I know. Possibly. And Celine Dion had a version that charted. Oh. That'd be an Lots interesting Lots of different take. people yeah. have, have done versions of this song. It's basically become a standard. It's a slow song. Mm-hmm. Um, not a whole lot of dynamics as far as music goes. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of whole up and down. It's just pretty steady. And it just lets the vocalist shine, yep. which is why all these divas, quote unquote, mm-hmm. have done versions of the song. It's it's almost a female unchained melody, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Maybe. I can see that. Okay. Um, her version, Etta's version, is in movies Rain Man. Yes. Pleasantville. Remember that movie? Mm-hmm. American Pie. Oh. Somewhere in there. It's in there. Maybe okay. it's... Uh, maybe it's right at the time he's going after that pie. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's that last. He finally is home alone. Stifler. Stifler's mom. Stifler's mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's on TV shows Always Sunny. Okay. Well, it was in the... Northern Exposure. It was yeah. on the Bates Motel, which I actually enjoyed. Oh, I, don't watch I, really, that. I really like Bates Motel. It was an episode of Criminal Minds, mm-hmm. Big Bang Theory, Simpsons. I could go on and on. It was on like a ton of TV stuff. I, I think every song has been featured on The Simpsons, quite well, honestly. Well, at this point, yeah, I would think you're right. Um, it's been in commercials for Jaguar. It's been in commercials for Hoover Vacuums, State Farm, and your favorite in mind to get a big Brutus beer, Applebee's. Mm. So it's you can find it there. Um, like I said before, it was in 2008 in a movie called Cadillac Records that Beyonce did it. And it's like a fictionalized version, basically of Motown and other soul music. Okay. So I think Eddie Murphy's in that movie. That was kind of his big comeback role. Oh. And uh, Beyonce no. was in it. No, 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 no. Yeah. Eddie Murphy's big comeback comeback role was Donkey in Shrek. Mm, no, when he was actually himself, like an acting, not just a voice actor. That's Donkey. He wasn't acting. He wasn't in the movie. <laughs> that was just his voice. We can. I'm going to keep arguing with you no. on this. <laughs> I, I could argue this all day long. Anyway. <laughs> Donkey. Beyonce Donkey. has a hit with it in 2008. It's released. 2009, she was asked to perform the song for the first dance for Barack and Michelle's oh. first dance as president and the wife of the president. And first right? lady, right? Yeah. So we so, get to do that. Which, by the way, was one of the most classy events of, like in politics of all yeah. time. And that was on January 20th of 2009. But I'm I, th- not a political statement whatsoever. Yeah. Like just from a pure class standpoint, like that was it. It was kind of cool. Well, guess what? Two weeks later... Etta James has a concert. She's oh. still kicking and around. Is she? She was at this time in 2009. Oh. And she's in Washington State, I believe. Mm-hmm. And she has like an outburst on on stage. Uh-oh. And she's like, I don't know if you guys know about this president, the one with the big ears. He's not my president, is what, what? she says. What? Uh, but to have her sing my song was just terrible. What? And I hope that bad, she says, if I ever see her, I will knock her out. Whoa. She wants to fight Beyonce. Because there's, it was her song. There's beef between there Etta was. James and Beyonce. And then two weeks later, okay. at another concert, she says, she finally names Beyonce. She said, Beyonce, she is not that good. She should not have been singing my song. That wow. is my song. Even though it had been around 20 years before Etta James' version. Whoa. That was like her, you know, calling card song. Right. And she was upset that she didn't get to go to the White House and sing the song. Wow. Beyonce did instead. So she she basically went to the grave with that. She died. No. Um, after that and, and never really made up with Beyonce or anything like that. Really? But yeah. She she was not happy that that song was played and it wasn't her singing it. Wow. Um, but then it is resurrected. The song comes back around. Um, 
2012, Etta James dies. And Christina Aguilera was asked by Etta James prior to her death to sing that song at her funeral. Wow. And she did, and it went over pretty well. And Christina Aguilera always liked Etta James. Mm -hmm. It was like one of her models and her, um, what do you call it? Like idols. Like like her vocal idols. Sure, sure. Yeah. And kind of um, did a lot of her phrasing and breathing after Etta James' style. And so pretty much ever since then, she sings the song in concert as a tribute to Etta James. No kidding. So if you see Christina or ex-Tina, uh, she might sing mm. this song for you. I, I really, uh, that. where did you fall on the whole Britney versus Christina side? Like, where, where, where were you on this? Uh, was the video on mute? Yes. Britney. Gosh. Leave Britney alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Drop that in. I, I, I was, <laughs> look, I love my wife. But yeah. Christina Aguilera is, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was, I don't know, they both went crazy a little bit, but. That's okay. Crazy's okay. That's all right. Crazy yeah. is fine. I feel like Christina Aguilera, well, first of all, she still sings. Yep. She still has a career. Yes. Uh, and she just did recently mm-hmm. uh, a song of hers I really enjoyed was the, was in the new Adams Family animated movie that came out last year. Oh, really? Uh, I never saw that one. It was pretty good. I oh. took my kid to it. In Sam the watched it. She's a huge Adams Family fan. Yeah. Like, hmm. She knows everything about it. Yeah, it was it was a good movie, but she has a song in it. It's like the title sequence song. And it's also in the credits. The Adams Family song? No, it's a uh, different song. Well, that's bullshit. Why Well, Wouldn't there's it be another the... there's another version of that no? in the movie for uh, you. Oh, okay. But that's not her style. Okay. But she does a song in that, and it was really good. Mm. Uh, and in 2013, which is a year after Etta James dies, um, Cindy Lauper is acting in an episode of Your Favorite and Mine, Bones, on Fox. Weird. Uh, Remember that show? Yeah. Yeah. I watched a lot of that. Huh. Well, she was in it, and her character on the show performed that song, like in a bar. Mm-hmm. And then she liked it so much, she put it on. She had like a Motown and Soul covers album around that same time put oh. it on there. So... There's thousands of versions of this song. It's everywhere. Um, but Etta James's version is probably the most popular. Not necessarily most famous. It didn't chart as high as some of the other ones. Um, but it's the one that kind of stuck with her. Whatever. If it's singing in your head right now, it's her it's version. It's Etta James's version. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's the, that's the one you're hearing in your head. Yes. Yeah, so that was where I went because it was pretty close. Because that's the beginning of the song. She says, at last. Yep. I didn't even want to do it. Any, at last. I, I didn't want to do any disservice to it. Because it is beautiful. It, it's, yeah. it really is that beautiful. That whole album, that one from 1960, her debut, mm-hmm. it's one of the best soul albums in the last, well, I guess it would be 60 years because it wow. came out in 1960. But there's five or six just all-time great songs on it. Not necessarily hits, but hmm. just amazing songs. Oh, well, Aretha Franklin has a version of it, too. She did a covers, like a Divas covers album, oh. like 2014, 2015. Yeah. And her version's pretty good, but it's not as good as Oh, as it was Edda's. after she died. So yeah, I, why it was didn't, like a tribute. Why thing. didn't Etta have beef with that? Then? Yeah, she, well, she probably would have. Mm. They didn't get along, from what I understood. What? But, yeah. Etta James was more of a, like a bluesy singer. Okay. And like not as uh, from the church as like Aretha mm. was. And that's like a lot of her stuff was gospel influenced and Etta was more blues and Southern kind of style of music. So they just didn't get along. No uh, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Well, maybe respect for the vocals, but uh, okay. that's about it. There we go. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's what I got for us on at even last. Dolan, even Dolan got that one. He, he got <laughs> one finally. Good job. Right. Mm, boy, uh, thanks for this beer. Oh man, no kidding, it's so good. Mark Lau, I, so when we put this out there, I saw it after after John had talked about this. I put it out there and with a picture of it, and you know, and said, you know, if you could get this for us, that would be fantastic. And Mark was one of the first that stepped up and said, "Hey, I got a traveler down there. Yeah, one that likes going to breweries, right? That loves craft beer, likes going to breweries. Ding, totally would do this for us. So you're getting a Atlas." Uh, beer glass. Yeah, pint glass and taster. And taster. Yep, Excellent. pint glass and taster. Can we just say for just, I just want to hit on this real quick while mm-hmm. we're still on the air. How hunky Atlas is on this label? Are you well, kidding me? Well. This hold, is what I wish I looked like. He's got to oh. hold up the world. I don't know how you get those abs doing that, but apparently Look, you do. Here's the thing, though. You got his beard. Well, kind of. It, it's getting longer again. I wish the hair. My hair is, will never look like that. Mm, yeah. Why not? Because it just, I have like... An afro. It just grows 
Uh, up and up and up, and it never mm. falls down. It, no matter how much is up here, it, goes it never straight. comes back down. See, I think long-haired Dolan is only six months away. So, Ooh. I'd love for Dol- long-haired Dolan to come back. It, it's making a comeback. It's just he, uh, you know Dolan got a haircut because because of our interview because you interviewed here. Um. Well, I more interviewed at my uh, my last my job before here. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was going to say multiple interviews so, at the same time. I got like... a haircut. Yeah. Hmm. But I got my hair chopped off in my last job before mm. here. See, I think long hair Dolan needs to come back. You know what I think would be great? And this is something that I saw recently and I was kind of surprised, but I also, it kind of warmed my heart a little. And this has nothing to do with this beer, but um, the rat tail. Mm-hmm. I think you'd look good with one of those. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, no. Nah. It's like a part time <laughs> mullet. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just like. You know, uh, I took my kid to get his hair cut about a month ago, mm-hmm. and the, in the chair next to his, which was uh, an airplane, mm-hmm. if anybody's wanting to oh, know. Oh, um, not the four-wheeler? You right. went with the airplane? Well, he was okay. in a police car, but the one next to us was an airplane. Okay. And that kid, his his mom was tatted up and pierced up, and um, she he already had a rat tail, the kid in the chair. Sweet. And uh, they were cutting the rest of his hair yeah. and left the rat tail, so he walked out of there with a pretty bitchin' rat tail. Nice. And in third grade, uh, at the Zeman Elementary Carnival, I won a free haircut, uh, like oh. doing a game. I think it was like a raffle or something. Mm-hmm. And you got a, like a free hairstyle. Oh. Well, in 19, it would have been, let's see, 88. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a whole lot of hairstyles for guys. Uh, my hair wouldn't grow long, mm-hmm. um, but it would grow in the back a little bit. Yep. So I had me a rat tail nice. for... Mm, about a month nice. and my mom made me cut it off mm. Mm. i'm still a little mad about that my buddy um joey is his first name uh we were neighborhood friends and he was actually at my wedding we still hang out still talk from time to time he has had a rat tail his entire life i'm talking this guy's awesome this sounds we like a went... guy that would have a rat tail yeah. joey that's joey. the name of a guy that would hey joey <laughs> Yeah, so he's, I like it. Joey. He's uh, he's got a little Apache in him. Oh, and okay. So his dad had a rat tail. Yeah. He had a rat tail. His uncle had a rat tail. They all had rat tails. And does he braid it? Um, it no, long? he oh, just leaves it. He, yep, he leaves it, and to this day, he has not cut that thing off. Wow. Yeah, mm. that's he pretty got, cool. Even in elementary school, he got a lot of a lot oh, of people. I bet. Hey, why don't you just cut that off? Yeah. Cut it off. I'm surprised nobody tried to cut it off. Yeah. yeah. Well, That's how bullying is, you know what right. I mean? Right. That was when we were nine years old. Well, he's 24 now, and he still has his rat tail. Sweet. Hell yeah. That's yeah. a family tradition right there. Mm-hmm. I like this guy already. I do too. What up, Joey? <laughs> I Joey. like it. Rock that thing. <laughs> right on. Hmm. Did Joey help you change your oil in your car? Like, it sounds like something he would do. <laughs> Actually, he <laughs> See? <laughs> Boom. Yo. Joey, I need to change my oil. Yeah. I like this. <laughs> Sounds like an awesome dude. Yeah. yeah. We he should bring the is. rat tail back. I mean, I saw something online that said something like, if guys have to shave their beards because of this coronavirus, yeah, uh, we should just grow mullets and rat tails. Mullets. Put the beard on the back. You know who would be good here yes. in the office with a rat tail? Who? Justin Pedig. Recruiter Justin Pedig. Yes, he would. He would look pretty good. Yeah. He'd yeah. be intimidating with a rat tail. Mm. If Justin is your recruiter... Message him right now. Mm-hmm. Get the rat tail. You Get the rat tail. A rat tail. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure how we got to the rat tail, but I'm glad we did. Doesn't matter. So uh, the old un. Uh, well, you know what? We're gonna do Trip Advisor first. Okay. Uh, now here's the thing. I don't know how big Tulsa is. I don't think it's huge. Is Tulsa bigger than Omaha? It might be only because it used to be like the oil center of the United States, okay, like in the early 1900s. But I don't know because there wasn't many reviews, only nine reviews. But they got a nine. Nine. That's it. Four point five out of nine. 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 Yet here's what's interesting though: there are 46 restaurants within 0.75 miles, so less than a mile of this place. Must be downtown. Downtown. Yeah. Can't bring your elephant. Found that out. That's <laughs> against the law. Yeah, you could still ride your donkey. Then. You could ride the donkey. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, donkey. Donkey. Uh, untapped. What do you think here? 3.8. I, I didn't even uh, tell. Yeah, I 
Three point six. I didn't even tell you how many check ins here. I don't care. I'm just that's shooting from the hip. What do you say? Three point eight. Three point six. Yeah. Three three point four eight. Hmm. Hmm. That seems a little low. It seems a little low on eight thousand five hundred and forty six check ins. That's quite a few check ins. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But they've got some decent distribution in Oklahoma. So. Is this a standard beer for them? Like, is, if you went to their brewery, is this the IPA you get? I believe so. Okay. I believe that was on their, it wasn't on their seasonal section. It was on okay. their, on their, uh, like, ev- the whatever they call whatever. it, everyday section, whatever that is. Okay. Yep. Well, I would like to go to this place and try some of their other beers for sure. Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, looking at their, yeah, looking at their beer list, that's, and especially around this Oktoberfest time that you speak of. They have. Well, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Oktoberfest beer. They have, um, their shirts were awesome. They had some, they were still a couple left. Mm-hmm. They had a guys and girls t-shirt Oktoberfest. Um, the guys one has Lederhosen on the nice. t-shirt. Nice. And the girls one had like that outfit. And uh, yeah, they just go all out apparently. So. So uh, Devin actually sent along with this, and I kept it for myself because I'm selfish. I mean, I would if I were you. Right. Uh, a T-shirt with the Atlas logo. And it was it's a three-quarter shirt, so it's like the baseball oh, sleeve. Oh, nice. I was looking at those online. Yeah. Good it's for so, you. It's sweet. I almost wore it today, but uh, I, well, went with, I went with a different choice instead. So Different brewery. Yep, exactly. Different different brewery. So, But I will I will rock that shirt. So thank you so much. This was a, uh, this was a interesting. An unexpected treat, really. It, absolutely. I really like this beer. Yeah. Look, Dolan's is finishes over there. I'm almost done with mine, and I would definitely be happy to get another one. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, we got three left, so. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I guess we're not going anywhere for a Let's while. Let's drink the rest of these beers. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.